today. I'm Corey Curtis. I'm a certified recognition professional here at Vaudeville, and today we're going to talk about some appreciation event ideas. Before we get started, I want to introduce uh, Kimberly. She's in the studio with me today. She'll be manning the chat, so please feel free to send her any of your questions or any difficulties you're having with the video stream. Um, she'll be able to help you there. Um, any ideas that you also want to share any time throughout the presentation, send via chat and Kim will let me know what's going on. Um, before I start talking about some ideas, we're going to start a poll, and Kim's going to put that up. And this poll just asks about what kind of appreciation events that you plan at your organization. There's four options. One is if you do a formal event once or twice a year, and that's like a, a holiday party or service award recognition event. If you do special events three to four times a year, like recognition holidays, or if you do frequent team celebrations where you get everyone together to celebrate accomplishments, or if you don't do any events, and this is where you're starting. Okay, so like I just said, there's two different kinds of appreciation events, formal and informal. And the formal events are typically those year-end parties, holiday parties, or service anniversary recognition dinner. And your informal events um, are ones that we help a lot of our customers with, like recognition holidays, like Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, Customer Service Week, or Employee Appreciation Day. Um, so we do a lot of those informal events, but the ideas I'm going to share today can really go either way. So depending on the types of events you do, you should get a lot of great tips out of this webinar. Um, and that's always the hardest part with planning events, is coming up with great ideas. Uh, so when I plan events, I know that I usually have two goals in mind. One is I want to make sure my audience feels appreciated, because I, you know, after all, that's the point. And secondly, I want it to be a memorable event. I want them to be able to walk away um, and just think really fondly on what happened. So today I'm going to consider talk about four elements that I usually consider in my event planning. Themes, communication, activities and games, and food and gifts. And so those are the things we're going to talk about, and I'm going to share some ideas and tips. Are we ready? Kim, do you have any poll results to share? I do. Uh, most people find uh, that they have less frequent informal events for teams, um, and then we also kind of are in the, the formal events and special recognition events are, are pretty in line um, as a second runner up. Great, so all the tips that we're gonna share are really gonna help you with those informal events and can also be applied to your formal events as well. So first, I wanna talk about themes. I am such a strong proponent of themes. Whenever I plan an event, I really try to have a theme that's going to encompass everything. And the nice thing about a theme is it keeps all your messaging consistent. So it's gonna make your recognition, your appreciation event a lot more effective. People are gonna remember it more easily. And it also helps you in your planning because that theme serves as your benchmark. So when you're thinking about what kind of games, what kind of gifts you wanna give people, you always should look back at that theme and ask yourself, now does this confuse the theme or does it support it in your messaging? So for example, one year for customer service week, we put on a celebration and the theme was red carpet service. And we use that theme because we are really recognizing our employees for all of the great service that they give our customers. So we literally rolled out the red carpet and our black floor mats that are at our entrances were changed to red. Uh, we had some really special activities and food that we did for people, including swag bags that went into every department. And so don't, but also think outside the box when you're planning your appreciation events. It, and don't keep repeating that Hollywood and Hawaiian luau over and over again. Your people need something different. So one year, another year for customer service week, we kind of used this iconic smiley face as our theme. And we, people got this mug and this um, squeezable praise as their gifts. And then each day of the week, an email went out from our planning team celebrating the accomplishments of all of the different departments and teams that we have here at Baudville and use this imagery. So again, it just reinforced that theme. Make sure that the theme you create really resonates with your people and reinforces those behaviors that you're recognizing and appreciating. For example, one of our customers plans a large annual event at the end of the year, and they always create a pretty unique theme, but that theme always ties to their company values, like teamwork and customer service. So some of their past themes have been we deliver as one and living it every day, everywhere. So no matter what kind of event you're putting on, if it's for volunteer appreciation, for service awards, um, or just something informal for your team, having that theme is gonna tie everything together. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about communication, which is one of my favorite topics. 
and next to recognition, of course. So when it comes to creating a memorable appreciation event, the most important factor isn't like where it is or how fancy or dressed up it is. It's how big of a deal that you make it as the event planner. And that all comes down to the kind of communication that you do. Once you pick a theme, your, your communication can fall into place and your communication is going to reflect that theme on everything you do. To build momentum for your event and get people excited, start communicating about it ahead of time, usually a few weeks, let people know the date and the time and the general idea of what to expect. And then each week as you get closer to that event, share something new, but don't give everything away because having a few surprises at the end is going to maintain that anticipation and that excitement when, once people get to your event. Also, one of the most important things I've learned you need to tell people when planning your event is what they should wear. A lot of people, um, especially footwear, if you're going to be having lawn games and a barbecue, make sure your attendees know not to wear high heels and fancy dress clothes. And there are a lot of different ways that you can communicate with your employees. And one of the most, and it's important that you use several different methods to do so. In your organization or in your audience that you're planning this event for, you're going to have people of all different communication preferences. You know, undoubtedly you have young millennials who prefer email communication or seeing an update on Facebook, but then you're also going to have baby boomers who really like to hold that tangible invitation in their hand. So make sure you accommodate everybody and use different communication styles. One fun way that you can promote your event is through a poster campaign. Develop three or four different posters um, with different messaging that all reinforce your theme, of course, and just post them up sporadically throughout your building or wherever people may see them. It's really important that you put them in high traffic areas where you know your audience is going to see them. And it's also fun to do things, put communication in some places that's going to kind of shock people and really grab their attention. We've put flyers on people's windshields, car windshields before, and also on the back of um, bathroom stall doors. It's just kind of a fun way to get your information out there and grab people's attention. If you really want to make your event feel special, I recommend handing out invitations. Even if it's just an informal event at your organization, having that invitation actually go out to people lets them know that it's a special event and that it's something that they need to take notice of. And you can do this either with a regular paper invite or you can do it electronically now. There's a lot of e-invite services that you can use for free or for a really low cost. And that helps you get that RSVP as well in a really easy way in the electronic medium. And don't forget about post-event communication too. We, this is our company newsletter. And hopefully you can see on the inside here, we have some pictures of our Employee Appreciation Day from this year. We've, we're showing some of our winners and some of the in-action shots of the activities that we did. If you're going to appreciate these people at your event, make sure that you're talking about them afterwards too. A lot of people who may not be able to attend your event want to know how it went. So make sure you utilize tools like newsletters, emails, your intranet, or any website your attendees check to get those messages out there. So we're moving right along. Next, we're going to talk about activities and games. And for us, um, we usually plan a lot of activities and games when we have events for our employees or any other events that we're putting on because it, builds, it has a sense of team building and bonding and it really makes it fun too. It gives you something to do. Plus, it's also, it also tends to be one of the most memorable elements of our events. And our employees will remember that activity in, for years to come. In fact, people still talk about some of the things we did years ago. So each year at Vaudeville, we hold a formal event called our year-end party. And this event is usually classified by the activity that we put on. So people think of this event as the casino year, or they look back at the scavenger hunt year, and they remember it like that. So you can see that by putting on an activity at your event, people are going to really remember it. Now some of our most popular games, um, one of them was actually a paper airplane throwing contest. And this is my pitiful paper airplane, I'm not very good at this. But it was a huge success here and people are still talking about it. Uh, every employee was given the task to come up with a paper airplane that they thought could fly the best. Hey Corey, we have a question oh, from okay. our audience here. Um, somebody was actually wondering if you have an event planning checklist. 
You know, I do have one that I use personally. I, it's not up on our website, but we will work on putting that into our free recognition download section in our Recognition Resource Center, and we'll have that up by the end of the week for you. So check back in our Recognition Resource Center. We'll also post something on the blog um, just to get direct you to that. And that's a great question because that checklist can help you stay on task and not forget any of the details, which is what can be so taxing about planning an event. So anything else, Kimberly, or can I keep going? Uh, so far, we're good. Thank okay. You. So um, paper airplane throwing contest was a huge success. Just because everyone had a chance to kind of have a little break and socialize, not so much as coworkers, but also a little as friends, and get together there. One of our most, uh, I think what has replaced the paper airplane contest as the most successful event so far was our Employee Appreciation Day this year. We actually put on a Winter Olympics for our entire company. And they, all the employees were divided into teams and they competed in six different events like a uh, chair obstacle course, um, ID card curling, a speed skating and a rubber band throwing competition. And so people competed throughout the whole afternoon. We had an award ceremony. Um, and people, it's so memorable that they still displayed their team colors at their desk. We have a lot of videos and pictures of this on our Facebook page. So if you want to get some ideas or get some more information about creating your own Olympics, it doesn't have to be winter, uh, go to our Facebook page and like us to see those. Does anyone else out there have any memorable events they've done at their programs that they want to share? Activities that people really remembered and speak, spoke highly of? I'd love to hear it, so send it in the chat to Kimberly and we'll share those in a minute. So the last element I have to talk about are gifts and food, which can be the most important thing for your event. Now typically when I talk to customers about recognition, I always suggest having a handwritten note. No matter what the award or gift is that you're giving, having that note really makes the recognition personal and also serves as a lasting memento for that recipient. And so it's really similar at an event when you have a gift for people because it's not really right for you to write a note to everyone but you certainly want to have them remember the event and the appreciation that you feel for them. So for example I'm working with one of our local charitable partners on one of their events that's coming up um, where they're going to recognize volunteers and donors. So at each place in the room they're going to have one of these notepads so that just says you are truly appreciated at the top. So again this really ties into their theme because they're appreciating donors and volunteers and it gives everyone something to take back with them. A gift that's personalized uh, for your event serves as kind of a lasting souvenir for people. This was one of my favorites from one of our events here at Baudville, and it's a glass that we have our logo engraved on and the date, and also the theme of our event. Okay, the theme thing keeps coming up. It's a great way to tie everything together. So if you can do personalized events uh, or personalized gifts, it's gonna make your event really memorable. If you're just doing something for a team, consider putting everyone's name and date on, some, on it. It's just a small gift that you can engrave. Your gift won't be very effective if you don't, if it's not something that people are going to use either. On our blog, I wrote a story about one of our customers who had an Essential Peace volunteer appreciation event. And so she thought about types of gifts that she could give people that they would use. So she used things like our memo clip and a note cube that she knew her volunteers would take back and use. So Kim, is there another question? Um, somebody was asking if you knew of any tax implications for employee events and gifts that you know of. It is important to look at the tax implications for gifts especially. There's some new legislation out there that you need to be aware of. I don't have time to go into all the details here, but again, we can post something on our blog that will share that with you. So keep tuned for that. Um, so. We talked a little bit about gifts, having something that's memorable, having something that your people are going to use because that's going to serve as that lasting memento. Now let's talk about the food. I don't know about your organization, but here at Baudville, having food and snacks and treats is one of our most popular ways to award and reward our people. Everyone loves it when the events include a snack because it's just a great way to get, gather together and celebrate whatever it is you're celebrating. So the food at your event really contributes to the atmosphere that you have and you want to make sure that it's going to connect with your theme. For example, if you're having popcorn at your event, it's going to be a much more informal and kind of a fun event as opposed to if you had shrimp served. So make sure you consider those different implications of the different food as you're planning your menu. And having something unique can really make people feel appreciated too. 
Uh, at Baudville, we've been a 101 best and brightest place to work for in our region for the past four years. So when this co event comes up and we're always and we're honored by this association, we always like to do something with our employees to celebrate because after all, it's them who makes us so great. So in the past couple of years, we've brought in some wonderful treats from the Grand Traverse Pie Company, which is a local bakery in the area, and we serve it a la mode for all of our employees in our little lunchroom, and we celebrate together. This is a really special treat because it's not something that employees typically have, so that they really look forward to getting to get together and tasting this. And so it also serves as both the appreciation event itself and your gift at the same time, which is a really easy way to plan your gift, your event. So now I've talked about theme, I've talked about communication, activities and games, and gifts and food. And so we've talked, covered everything. Uh, after this webisode, you'll get an email with a survey to asking you for some feedback about the topic. And we really hope you'll fill that out because that gives us some ideas for what to do next month. Also go to our blog to read a lot of these ideas and get some links to other resources that we talked about, including that checklist. I'll add that a little bit later. So Kimberly, are there any other questions from the audience before we close for the day? Um, no, we don't have any other additional questions. We have some, some additional ideas that people are doing, such as uh, uh, somebody's husband has a, a job um, for everyone every quarter if they've been accident free in their, in their workforce, which is great. And then we also have somebody too that's kind of putting on a, a Biggest Loser competition. So they're looking for some great ideas to um, reward the, the people that are in that program. Great, well that wellness program sounds like a great idea and I just would encourage you to make sure that you tie all of your gifts or awards and celebrations back to that theme. Obviously it's wellness, it's health, it's losing weight and feeling better about yourself. So make sure you're not serving fatty foods or giving them DVDs that are gonna encourage them to sit at home and watch TV. But make sure again that you tie everything back to your theme. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We hope that you will join us next month for our next Recognition TV webisode. Have a great day.